Hey, good morning, and what's happening, options traders? Well, a couple of weeks ago, I posted a comment to another trader's question that it had to do with using the delta as a measure of the probability of an option being in the money. And if you talk to a lot of people out there, lots of books and websites that will all say that your options delta is the probability of your option being in the money. And my main point of this video is to show you that in some cases, that can be a, an okay assumption, but in other cases, it's going to be grossly off. And if you're using grossly bad figures to make decisions, you're going to come up with bad results. So if nothing else, I just want to show you just how bad these discrepancies can be and to be careful when you're using delta as a measure of the probability of that option being in the money. So as a quick refresher, delta, recall shows your options sensitivity to changes in the stock price. So if we have a $100 call trading for three, your broker's platform might show that it has a delta of 60. And this just simply means that that option's going to pick up about 60% of that next move in the stock's price, whatever it might be. If the stock goes up 10 cents immediately, we're going to pick up about 6 cents. But most traders just assume that it makes a $1 move out of convenience. So if the stock rises from 100 to 101 right now, that call is going to pick up 60 cents. And that means that call rises from about $3 to 360. And at that time, you're going to generate a new delta based on gamma. And of course, you'll get all new Greeks, new delta, gamma, theta, vega, rho, everything gets recalculated. But the main thing for this video is to focus on the delta. And again, your broker's platform will show you this, and it is commonly used as the probability for the option to expire in the money. And again, what I want to show is just how dangerous of an assumption that can be in some cases. Now to do this, we're gonna to have to take a little brief look at the Black-Scholes formula. Don't worry, you don't need to use this, but I'm just trying to show you where the numbers are coming from. Now in the Black-Scholes world, there are two numbers that you need to calculate, and one they conveniently call D1. And here it is. You're going to take the what's called the natural log of the stock price divided by the strike. We're going to add to it the risk-free rate plus the volatility squared divided by two, and multiply that by the time. Now the time should always be in years in the Black-Scholes world. And we're going to divide that by the volatility squared times the square root of time. So that's gonna give us this first number, D1, and then we have to come up with a second one. Formula's not done yet. D2 says to take this number and subtract off this denominator. And what we're going to do is look under a bell curve, for those of you who have had statistics, remember the Z value, how much area lies to the right or left of these numbers. And that's what's giving us some of the information that we need to calculate an option's fair value. So in the Black-Scholes world, this D1 right here is your option's delta. That's showing us the hedge ratio for this option. And that is, in fact, the true delta, the ND1 number. However, this right here is the probability for the option to expire in the money. And your broker's platforms typically don't show you this because as traders, we're more interested in seeing how the option's going to respond to changes in the stock's price. And in some cases, this D1 will be very close to this D2 figure, but in other cases, it's going to be vastly different. So let's jump over to an Excel spreadsheet and see just how different they can be. So over in the Excel spreadsheet, I've just put these together here. I've got a stock price of 100, strike of 105, volatility of 20%, risk-free interest rate of 1%. And again, the Black-Scholes model likes to see things in years. Normally I talk about days to expiration, but if we had 90 days to expiration, that would be 0.25 years. So it just makes the formula a little easier to use. So if we take all of these figures and we throw it into that D1 formula that we saw, we get this number, minus 0.41. And then if we use this D1 number in our D2 number, we get minus 0.51. So now we have to have Excel look up what is the area under a normal distribution for this number here, minus 0.41. And it's gonna tell you it's about 33.98. Let's call it 34%. That's your options delta. 
And that's what would be shown on your broker's platform. So again, we've got a 90 day option, stocks at 100, we've got the 105 strike, volatility at 20%. It's an out of the money option. Delta should be less than 50%, and it is. ND2 is the probability of the option being in the money. And it's about, let's call it roughly 30 and a half. So not a real big discrepancy. And in a case like this, sure, you can use your delta as an approximate probability for the option to be in the money. But does that mean that it always works well? Not at all. A couple of things. Let's pump up the volatility, let's say to 40%. Now look what happens. Your delta is 44, it went up because an out of the money option becomes more likely to expire in the money under higher volatility. But it also means, interestingly, that there's a lower percentage chance for it to be in the money because it's higher volatility. Volatility is non-directional, could be up, could be down. Watch what happens if we extend the time to expiration. Let's go out one year. Now your delta is 54, but the probability of the option being in the money is only 38. That's a big difference. Let's go out two years. See, now you might be using 59 as an approximate probability for your option to be in the money, when the reality is it's about 37%. Huge difference. Let's pump this up to 60% volatility. Not uncommon in these markets. Now your delta is going to show 65, and you're making your decisions thinking you've got a 65% chance for this option to be in the money. And it's not anywhere close. It's about 32%. So that was really the main point of this video, it wasn't really to teach the ins and outs of the Black-Scholes model. You don't need to know that. The only thing you need to know is that if you have been told to use the delta as the probability for your option to expire in the money, it works in some cases, but it can be grossly off in others. Now, as a side note, this formula is just for call options. We would get really the reverse effect for puts. We would find that it understates it for puts. But either way, if you're using bad information to make your decisions, you're going to end up with bad results. And so for anyone who'd like to learn more about the arts and science of options trading, please check out the Alpha Trader course, Strategy Lab, and a brand new technical analysis course. It's all at optionsa-z.com. Also, please join us on the Facebook trading group, Options A to Z, and you can find a link in the description below.